我哋有嘅就系用我哋嘅肉体。Simon Cheng is an activist in exile. With his name on China's most wanted list, he's one of the thousands of Hong Kongers forced to flee. We really need to stand together because we are now seeing Hong Kong human rights situations getting worse and worse. Hong Kong, once a haven for free speech, is falling into the grip of Beijing. We have no any power, but we have a voice. China's new national security law clamps down on any sign of dissent. Those that can are now looking to leave the former British colony. Many are taking up the UK's offer of citizenship to relocate. It feels really weird going, leaving home, and it's going to be for a long time. But for others, there is no choice but to stay and stay quiet. Simon Cheng has been granted political asylum to remain in the UK, where he continues to fight for democracy in Hong Kong. Our belief is simply to choose our leaders of Hong Kong. While he feels safer here, he's convinced he is still being watched. Even that day, I heard about the news that I I'm on the wanted list. I also have been monitored in Whitehall, in the central London. Back in Hong Kong, Simon worked for the British consulate. Like most of his friends, he supported the peaceful pro-democracy movement. But in 2019, on a business trip to mainland China, he was arrested and put in solitary confinement, where he says he was tortured for 15 days. They asked me to stand still for countless hours. They, I was not allowed to sleep. And then once I just give a bit move, and I will be bitten. And one of the punishment is that they would punish me to sing Chinese anthem. They said that could wake me up. It did wake him up. But not in the way they intended. Simon has become one of the most prominent faces of Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement. It's not just activists trying to get out. Hong Kong residents are increasingly looking to leave the island, with requests for visa application documents leaping by 40% from 2018 to 2019. And a recent poll by the Chinese University of Hong Kong found that 42.3% of young adults were considering leaving. Compared to 34% the year before, 18-year-old Edward is preparing to start a new life as a student in the UK, and he doesn't expect to come back. He won't give his real name or show his face to protect the relatives he's leaving behind. It's ironic how we're us Hong Kongers have to be pushed out of our own homes by the Hong Kong government because of how disgusting it is and how. How every day, every second, our freedom is slowly disappearing. Edward's parents and sister are planning to join him as soon as they manage to sell their apartment. The family are researching homes, cars, and jobs in Britain, hoping to relocate before it's too late. But they've got mixed feelings about the move. I grew up in here. I love this place. I study here, marry, and have children here. Um, they also like Hong Kong so much. We feel that not not safe here, sitting more. Yeah, the police is just do the job for the government, not for Hong Kong people. Now, Hong Kong is China. At the end of January, Britain opened a visa scheme to all Hong Kong residents with a British national overseas passport. The visa is a fast track towards citizenship. The passport is available to Hong Kongers alive before the handover in 1997. That's almost three million people. We made clear, Mr. Speaker, that if China continued down this path, we would introduce a new route for those with British national overseas status to enter the UK, granting them limited leave to remain, with the ability to live and work in the UK, and thereafter to apply. For citizenship, and that is precisely what we will do now. But for those who can't afford to relocate or are too young to qualify, there's little choice but to stay behind. I don't have enough money because I'm a fresh graduate from nursing, so I don't have a lot of cash to start a new life in other city. Yeah, and I have parents to take care of, so 
I can't leave them. A British colony for over 150 years, Hong Kong was handed back to China with an agreement to protect its citizens' democratic rights for 50 years. Sir Malcolm Rifkind was one of the architects of the deal. The Chinese government had a number of reasons why they, want, why they went for two systems in one country. The first was not to kill the golden goose, that Hong Kong had an even greater economic importance to China than it has today. It still has very great economic importance, but much less so because of the growth of Chinese economy in the mainland. As China's economy grew, so did its grip on Hong Kong. In 2014, Beijing ruled out open elections, triggering a wave of protests, some of which turned violent. In 2019, up to two million people marched against China's proposed extradition bill, which would have allowed the transfer of suspects from Hong Kong to mainland China. A few months later, protesters closed the international airport, and China withdrew the bill. But on the 30th of June last year, China hit back with a national security law that effectively banned protests, either in the streets or on social media. The punishment for such crimes is up to life imprisonment. Peter fled to London just 48 hours after friends on his Telegram channel were arrested under China's new law. Not until the Communist Party is done, I will say there is no future for Hong Kong. He was one of the protesters who embraced violent methods, throwing Molotov cocktails at riot police. This is how he used an umbrella to protect himself from the water cannons. Peter is certain he'd face prison or worse, which is why he won't reveal his name or show his face. He hasn't seen or spoken to loved ones since he moved in July last year, and is afraid to leave his apartment in case he's followed by Chinese agents. You just simply cannot trust anyone. You just don't know who are the agents from the China. In July 2020, the UK suspended its extradition treaty with Hong Kong in the wake of the Chinese security law, protecting dissidents like Simon and Peter. In August, the US followed suit. Relations between China and the West are now the worst they've been for decades, with tensions around trade, 5G technology and human rights abuses. It leaves architects of the handover asking what went wrong and how they failed to foresee China's crackdown. What was totally unexpected, not just in Britain or the West, but also in Hong Kong and in China, was that a new Chinese leader would emerge who not only would refuse to liberalise and reform China, but would go in the opposite direction. Meanwhile, Hong Kongers are continuing to look for an exit. Simon hasn't spoken to his parents or siblings since fleeing Hong Kong, in case he puts them in danger. It's the one thing he regrets the most. I would feel sometimes so selfish to want to achieve the dream or want to achieve to being truly myself. And then I abandoned my family. But even he admits he's one of the lucky ones. For each of the activists who managed to leave, millions are left behind, forced to accept that Hong Kong's dream of democracy is fading fast. Edward arrived in London to start his new life. Relief tinged with sadness. I've just landed in the UK and it feels so surreal because I miss Hong Kong. <laughs> I don't know. Am I getting homesick already? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> 